Hello, Uta here with another trans widow testimony. But first, uh, the roses, this light pink one is called New Dawn. And this tiny light pink one is called The Fairy. And of course, this peach colored one is Lark Ascending. And I can't remember what the name was of this one. And I just cut myself this nice little bouquet. Uh, some of these will continue to bloom over the course of the summer. Let's see there. <laughs> Oops, I don't want you to fall over. <laughs> yes. Now, <clears throat> uh, what are we going to call her? Let's call her Berta. Uh, I'm going to have to write that down. <laughs> now, this was just published in uh, the Daily Mail. And so a trans widow story is hitting a British newspaper. And uh, I think that uh, the reason this is uh, coming uh, to the surface is because it's happening so frequently. So I'm just going to read right through it. Uh, it is titled, How My Husband became a woman after 25 years of marriage. First, she caught him wearing her knickers. This is in Britain. Then he changed his name to Charlize. Now, the names have been changed, they said, at the end of this. So I think it's interesting that they chose Charlize. Charlize, uh, what's her name, actually deserves that. <laughs> uh, okay changed his name to Charlize and started hormone treatment with no thought of the life-changing impact on her and their three children. I don't know when or even if my ex-husband was ever planning to tell me. Aha, so it was a discovery, not a revelation. In the event, I, have, I found out by mistake when I discovered him in the flesh, literally. Uh, when I discovered him wearing the red camisole and knickers from La Perla that he had given me for Christmas. I never had fancy things like that, but uh, <laughs> he thought I was out. Our three teenage children were downstairs watching a film together in the den. Gee whiz, what if they had had a fight or something? and uh, needed to find him quickly. Like, huh? <laughs> okay. It was, of course, the most enormous shock. Time froze for a few seconds as I took in this surreal sight. Was that red lipstick he was wearing? Of course it was. To be fair, he was terribly embarrassed. We had been married for 25 years and together since our early 20s. Two years older than me, he seemed so together. I loved him. We were a very happy, normal family, or so it seemed to me. I thought I had won the lottery of life. I didn't tell anyone what I had seen. I felt ashamed and embarrassed. We went to couples counseling and he assured me that it was just a bit of cross-dressing. Yes, in my new book, which I'm working on very slowly, called, uh, the title will be, uh, Trans Widows, Trans Widow Chronicles, uh, Leaving and Healing. And uh, the deal is, um, you need to get ready to leave after that first sight. This is going to do nothing but spiral down. There is basically only one way out, and that is to try to get a divorce before it gets too crazy. Okay, I didn't tell anyone what I had seen. I felt ashamed and embarrassed. We went to couples counseling, and he assured me that it was just a bit of cross-dressing. I knew he was a good person, that he loved me and the children, and I understood that he had grown up in a very traditional, middle-class family. 
Uh, I don't think we learn anything more about whether there's uh, traditional religious stuff or whether there was any kind of abuse, but, you know, it might fit into that same pattern that Nettie had. Uh, in a tr traditional middle-class family where something like cross-dressing would have been totally unacceptable. I decided I could live with it. You know, her kids are teenagers. She's got three kids. Um, yet deep down, I must have known he wasn't telling me the whole truth, for one day when everyone was out, I went up into the attic, which he always organized, for a look around, and there I found it a suitcase I didn't recognize containing size 9 heels, fishnet tights, makeup negligees, and a long auburn wig. Okay, that's when you need to really make the plans. You need to get him to move out. This is not about discrimination or transphobia. This is, uh, you know, Uta's notes here, as I put on my blog at uh, utahegengrasswidow.wordpress.com. Uh, you don't need to make excuses or uh, put in some special considerations for your shocked reaction. This is very, very shocking, and it indicates that there's probably other people getting involved with him in his sexual fantasies. Uh, this is not about discrimination or transphobia, a term I'd never heard of when I discovered that suitcase 10 years ago. I've always been a huge advocate of compassion and support for people who wish to express or become the gender they feel they are inside. Well, uh, she hasn't done the research. Um, huh. Yeah. I mean, sometimes I do have this feeling of, gee whiz, if I had sent Nettie to chiropractic and a bunch of mind-body uh, work, would he have come back to himself? And I was kind of trying to be perfect, walking on eggshells, trying to save him. The current revolution in all matters related to gender means more and more people in their 40s and 50s are admitting what was previously a secret, leaving wives and children to deal often overnight with a radically different version of the person they love. Yet all too often those wives and children are not afforded compassion and support themselves, but instead are cast aside or forgotten or even accused of bigotry. Today, people talk about trans widows and trans orphans. I want to tell my family's story because I know cases like ours are not uncommon but are largely untold. At couples counseling, my husband continued to underplay it. He insisted he was not gay. He said his cross-dressing was a reaction to the lack of regular, regular sex in our marriage. Oh, please. Ugh which, like many long-term relationships, had suffered a dip in intimacy. So it was partly my fault. No, no, it wasn't partly your fault, sweetheart. No, you need to come to our channel. Somebody find this woman. It's anonymous. There's, there's no author listed. Um, also, I want you to know that um, the next couple of pages I'm reading cold. <laughs> so I, I saw this first couple of pages and I was like, okay, I have to do something for my subscribers. They need to know about this first from me. <laughs> Having seen him in my lingerie, I didn't really want to have sex with him at all. And that needs to be said. The, the, the therapists have not done any research on us. And uh, this needs to be recognized. They need to say, listen, you know, your wife is not going to be interested in you anymore. It's very, very likely. Um, <laughs> I didn't know what he'd been thinking. <laughs> well, uh, would he have rather been me? But he started to get angry at this. So I forced myself to keep the peace, gritted my teeth in bed and resumed more regular sex. That's really awful. I mean, I understand. I understand, but just don't put yourself through that. It's, it's much better to find someone new, <laughs> to go through a period of being alone, help your kids, you know. Um, you are being drawn into that closet behind a closet. 
that is what is happening. Looking back, I was desperately trying to keep things the same as they had always been. I'd have done anything not to break up the family. And he, the schmuck, knows it. Uh, after six months of weekly counseling, he stopped attending, claiming he had been to see a hypnotist and was cured of the need to cross-dress, in part because we were more active in the bedroom. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Oh, it's so awful to try to have sex with uh, someone that you don't trust. Um, just, you know, I don't care if you're married to him. This is, he did not deserve all this time that you gave him, my dear Berta. It was just a temporary midlife crisis, he claimed. Yeah, that, Nettie said that too. He used that line too. And now we could go back to normal. He never said, sorry. He had also been spending a lot of money on trips, clothes, and hotels using a separate bank account. Oh, funny thing. <laughs> He's a Nettie. Mm. This especially upset me. He worked in management consultancy and was theoretically on a good wage, but I had been paying a lot of bills on my part-time life coach wage, having given up my full-time career to look after the children. Classic. Yeah, been there. I had trusted him around money and thought he was saving it, but clearly not. We weren't broke, but we had three children, one at private day school, one at a state six-form college who needed a private tuition, and one studying for a diploma. It wasn't cheap. I agreed to an open marriage if that meant we could delay divorcing, but a few months later, the situation began to spiral. These stories need to be out there over and over and over again because that's what they do. They spiral. He stopped hiding evidence of cross-dressing. I began to find things around the house, nail polish that wasn't mine, size 18 women's clothes in his drawers. 18. A buxom lass. Uh, parcels addressed to him from Zara arriving on our doorstep. I guess Zara is a clothing company. I'm so unfashionable that I don't know about it. <laughs> then, with no warning, he hired a lawyer and sued me for, the, for a divorce on the grounds of unreasonable behavior. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> the petition cited the breakdown in marital relations my mood swings. I was perimenopausal, yes, but nothing like as bad as some. I mean, really, this is unbelievable. She's under so much strain. This is, this is just nonsense. <laughs> uh, plus my financial dependence and aspirational spending habits. That's what he wrote about her. Oh my goodness. It's so classic. It's, you know, and here it is. It's got to have been vetted. It's printed in the Daily Mail. He began to rent a bed sit nearby, but in revenge stopped paying anything for the children, which meant I was left with the mortgage, school fees, and all of our expenses. <laughs> yeah, check, check, check. I'm so glad this is in the paper. Meanwhile, he gave up work and went on benefits on the grounds of emotional distress. I also discovered from his mail, which I guiltily started opening now he had gone, that he had run up debts on a credit card, had a PayPal account I knew nothing of, and that he had not paid into his pension since shortly after we married. He had been spending a lot of money on trips, clothes, and hotels using a separate bank account. Again, again, check, 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 check. This especially upset me. <laughs> okay. I had, uh, yes, okay, that I already read that. <laughs> I'm just, oh gosh. And then there's this picture <laughs> of a guy holding a stupid high heel. It's from Getty Images. They just put all these pictures that aren't really of the people um, that are random in, in as illustrations. I found myself struggling to keep our heads above water, so I got myself another part-time job pulling pints in a local pub and put our spare room on Airbnb. <laughs> so she's like working around the clock, <laughs> which the children didn't like. It's also putting them at risk. You don't know those people. 
I increased my life coaching hours and worked six days a week, and the older children found themselves part-time jobs. I felt proud of their efforts, but also furious that his deceit and irresponsibility had put us into this position. In fact, the children were upset with me because they assumed I had kicked out their father with little reason. <clears throat> they didn't know about his cross-dressing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And still wanted to protect, and I still wanted to protect them from the truth. I think I was frightened to tell them. Not long after he left, I got a letter from the solicitors demanding that we sell the family home within six months and give him half the proceeds. I couldn't believe it. Oh, wow. Hmm. Uh, once again, there was no reply to my inquiry via lawyers as to how we should handle this as a family. Instead, my ashen-faced daughters told me they received a round-robin email from their father sent to his parents' uncle to, and two siblings in, informing them. He did it by email to his children, informing them <laughs> that his pronouns were now she and her and that he had changed his name to Charlize. I wasn't included. His parents traveled up from Dorset to see the children for lunch one weekend, but it was a disaster. They were as confused as the children, and no one knew what to say. That was how I learned my husband had been interested in dressing up in girls' clothes even when he was a young boy. They had turned a blind eye to it and certainly never breathed a word of it to me. My ex-in-laws knew something about that, too. I bet there's uh, some kind of abuse story that goes along with this that they've swept uh, under the rug. <laughs> My understanding now is that he would almost certainly have known from an early age that he was gender fluid. You know, he has a psychiatric illness. Uh, this, you know, we can't do this to ourselves. Did he think about this at the altar when we made our wedding vows? What was real about our marriage? Had our whole life been a lie? <laughs> Good questions. We lived in one of those South London suburbs where everyone knows each other, and I started getting funny looks in the street. The two youngest were being teased at school, even ostracized. It turned out that Charlize was prolific on Facebook and was going around the neighborhood in fishnet tights, skimpy tops, and heavy makeup. None of us would deny Charlize his, she wrote her, I'm saying his, his right to this freedom. <laughs> uh, okay, I've lost my place. You know what? Uh, we're going to have to make this part one. And I have to figure out these pages. <laughs> and I have to do my homework. And I'll, I'll uh, have part two out tomorrow. So this is Berta, part one. Please stop and smell the roses. Take good care. Like and subscribe. Positive comments, please. Let's increase our community.